Hey, first graders. So yesterday we read the story, The Boy Who Cried Wolf, and today we're going to talk about it. So let's review our learning objectives for this lesson. So at the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the characters, setting, plot, and moral of a fable. You should be able to define and use the word startled, and you should be able to identify the moral of a fable. So let's review our key vocabulary for this lesson. We had five words. They were company, prank, shepherd, startled, and tended. So we talked about this yesterday, but when you have company over, that means that you have people who came over to join you and talk to you and spend time with you. Um, and an example of that was, I always like to have company when I go for a walk in the park. The next word is prank. And a prank is a practical joke or a trick. So the example that we used was, I am going to play a prank on my brother by tying his shoelaces together. We also talked about the word shepherd. And a shepherd is somebody who guards, herds, and tends sheep. Example of using the word shepherd would be the young shepherd watched over his sheep wherever they went. And then here's your shepherd over here watching his sheep. The next word that we had was startled. And startled just means to be surprised. Okay. And we said, oh, I remember this one. Juan was startled by the large spider on his bed. I would definitely be startled. I'm not a fan of spiders in my bed. And then we talked about the word tended, which means watched over or took care of. And we talked about how your mom and your dad or your uncle or your aunt or somebody tends to you because they take care of you. Um, and then an example, another example was the boy tended the sheep. So now that we have reviewed our, comp or reviewed our vocabulary, I'm going to ask you guys some questions, okay? And I want you to answer them. You can tell somebody at home with you. You can get a stuffed animal and tell your stuffed animal. Um, anything like that. But I do want you to answer these questions out loud and in full sentences. So here we go. What elements of this story make it a fiction story? So remember, our story elements are our characters, the setting, the plot, um, the moral. So it's asking, how did we know that this is a fiction story? Okay. How do we know? This one's kind of a tricky question. The reason we know this is a fiction story is because we know it's a fable and we know that all fables are made up and they're made up so that we can learn a lesson, okay? So because we knew it was a fable, we knew it was made up because all fables are made up to teach us a lesson or a moral. So the people or animals in a story are called characters of the story. We learned that when we talked about it. So can you tell me who the characters in The Boy Who Cried Wolf are? Look at this picture to help you. Okay, so let's think. Who are the characters in this story? We have the shepherd boy. You see him right here. We have the sheep. We have the three farmers. And then there's one more character that you can't see in this picture. But what happened to those sheep at the end? A wolf finally came, right? So we had a wolf as a character, too. The setting of a story is where it takes place, okay? What is the setting of this fable? So where is this, where is this fable taking place? Think, look at the background. That'll help you. Uh, the setting of this fable is a field. Do you see the field? At the foot of a mountain near a forest. 
and that was in the story so you can't really see that part in the picture but that's what we had learned in the story do you think that this fable could have taken place in a different setting do you think that this could have happened in a different place i think it probably could have but it would still have to be somewhere where sheep could live right and where you would have farmers so it couldn't be in a city all right um ooh. what was the shepherd boy doing at the very beginning of the fable do you remember what he was doing he was tending his sheep right he was taking care of those sheep and do you remember how he felt at the beginning what did he want he wanted something I'll give you a hint. He was all alone watching his sheep all day, every day. He was lonely, right? He was really lonely and he wanted somebody to come and give him some company. So what did the boy do because he was lonely? So what did he decide to do because he was lonely? He pretended to see a wolf to get the company. Remember, he ran down the hill and he was like, wolf, wolf, right? And there wasn't actually a wolf. But what happens at the end when a wolf really comes? Did anybody come to help him? No, no one came to help him because he had been tricked. He was tricking them too many times. He was pranking them too many times. All right, so the beginning, middle, and end events in a story are called the plot of the story. I want you to look at this picture and I want you to tell me, is this the beginning, middle, or end of the story? Okay, look, I'm going to give you a hint. I want you to look at the shepherd boy. What is he doing? He's going. So what do you think he just did? And do you see these, the farmers are coming up and that one looks kind of upset. It's the middle of the story, right? Because the boy is calling for help, but there's no wolf, right? You don't see any wolf and you see him going because he was tricking them and they are upset because he was tricking them. So all of Aesop's fables or stories were meant to teach a moral or a lesson about how to behave. Do you remember what the moral from this story is? We talked about it. If you often lie, people won't believe you even when you are telling the truth. So, and another way of saying that is just not to lie, right? Another way of saying that is to tell the truth, okay? So that's the moral of the story. Don't lie because then people aren't going to believe you when you are telling the truth. All right. Um... So... Why didn't the men come up to help the shepherd boy at the lap when the when the wolf actually did come? Why didn't they come and help him? They didn't believe him, right? Because they had tricked or because he had tricked them too many times. All right. So now that we have answered our comprehension questions, and hopefully you remember our story a little bit more now, um, we are going to do some word work with that special word, startled. Remember in our learning objectives, um, it was at, we, hang on, I'll go to the page where it shows you. So over here, you can see that it says the word startled, okay? And it says that we will be able to define and use the word startled. So our word work for today is going to be, oopsie, our word work for today is going to have to do with the word startled. So in the read aloud, you heard the startled boy ran toward the valley and more loudly than ever, he cried, wolf, wolf. Okay, so I want you to say the word startled with me and I want you to say it in a normal voice first. So startled. Now I want you to say it like you are startled. Startled! Okay, now I want you to whisper it. Startled. 
Okay, and remember that startled means surprised, right? That's why when I said, say startled like you are startled, we went startled, okay? And now I'm gonna use it in a sentence. I was startled by the bee that landed on my nose. And that would really startle me because I'm allergic to bees, so I do not go anywhere near them. Okay, I want you to think of a time when you were startled by someone or something. And I want you to think, or, and I want you to use that word startled when you're telling about it, okay? So I'll give you another example. I was startled when I went around the corner and my dog jumped out at me. Do you see how I use the word startled and I used a full sentence? I want you to try and do that too, okay? And I want you to tell either your stuffed animal or somebody at home. So go ahead and do that. All right, so my brain forgot. What's the word we've been talking about? I forgot. That's right, startled. Okay, I can't believe I forgot that. Thank you for helping me out. All right, I am going, we're gonna play a game now. And I am going to read a sentence. And if I describe a situation where someone is surprised, I want you to say, they were startled. If I describe a situation where someone is not surprised, I want you to say, they were not startled. Okay, ready? The sound of the loud siren made the boy jump. The boy was startled, right? If you if you were not expecting that um, siren to be loud and if you jumped, you are probably startled, okay? Here's another one. The boy's father read a story to him before bedtime. I don't think there were any surprises in that one. So we're gonna say the boy was not startled. All right, the girl's grandmother helped comb her hair. No surprises in that one either. So we would say the girl was not startled. Okay, how about this one? The cat pounced from behind the tree and scared the bird. Yeah. He, the bird was startled, right? Because the bird was not expecting the cat to jump out at him. All right, last one. When the girl entered the room, her brother jumped out from behind the couch and shouted, boo. Yeah, the girl was startled and maybe you were startled too. All right. So um, now what I want you to do is you're gonna get a piece of paper and you're gonna get a pencil. And you are going to write your answer. It's gonna be either yes or no. Um, and you can have mom or dad or somebody help you spell the, those words if you don't know how. Um, and you're gonna answer this question. Was the moral of the boy who cried wolf that if you often lie, people will still always believe what you tell them? So I'm going to say it again, but I'm going to say it in a different in a different way. I'm going to say it. I'm going to reword it. Is the moral or lesson of the boy who cried wolf that if you lie, people are always going to believe you? And you're going to write yes or you're going to write no. And then I want you to get hold your paper up and I want somebody to take a picture of you and send me your answer. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again later.